Parsonage with a twist. What a year, what dramas, but we're here now. The launch of the Common Sense Cook. It's been uh, <coughs> a drama to get here. Obviously the pandemic and I'm shouting a bit loud, I know that. Uh, you know what, this is a, it's been a, a journey to get to here. It's been a credit to uh, my family and us uh, to get to here. Every meal in this book is something that we've cooked over the last two years. If you look at this, this chart here, this is, so every time we had a meal, it got wrote down on this chart. And then obviously my kids told me how bad it was and Danielle and Adam and uh, Vanessa. I never said it yeah, was bad. Yeah, you never said it. So from this book, became this book. Uh, and I, I've got to thank a few people before we start, because I will have a few drinks as we go. And uh, you know how it goes. Normally, if you watch this class, I'd like to thank uh, number one, Alan Benson, the photographer. Uh, we were under great pressure to get this book done, because obviously we were in covert. It wasn't going to happen, but we pushed through in the end. Jimmy Calloway, it's my nice. son, who's worked with me for years. Uh, Emma Knowles, <laughs> food stylist. <laughs> Peter, who always had to run to the shop and buy something. Lily, be quiet. Delicious magazine. Uh, for all your support. Uh, Pan Macmillan and Plum, Charlotte, uh, Mary <coughs> for putting up with me and for deciphering all my uh, challenges of writing. Uh, Johnny Pictures, who's got like 50,000 cameras here tonight. <laughs> and there's mics and stuff everywhere. We don't have a house anymore, but look at, well, you see the quality. And if you've got a wedding, these guys are great. Uh, <laughs> Tommy Rock, like we wedding pro, like these guys, you get the best video. Uh, then to local, like all year we've been cooking in the house. So Peter's meets. <clears throat> Like you guys have supported us all along. To my one of my best friends, Anthony and Rebecca Vix Meats, who've supported me for 20 years and have been in every book. Uh, to the fish shop in Maroubra, you guys, you know, we're using your fish tonight. Uh, Slay and Whiskey, you got me through lockdown. Obviously, my cholesterol's gone through the roof, so Alex, I'm sending you a bill. Uh, Burke Street Bakery and Whitey, you know, you guys have supported us uh, with the, the soup kitchen and all along. Whitey's pop pie. Whitey will be here tonight. Uh, Jane's talking in the back there. This is usual. Jane starts distracting. She's had a gin. It's all the wheels well, are starting to come off. Usually, you just ignore me until you need something. Cut. That's out of the edit. Cut. Uh, so Whitey and them guys have supported us in Burke Street Bakery in the soup kitchen. To everyone in Melbourne, uh, we're glad you're out. Sydney, we're glad you're out. Well, we've been out for a while. Don't know what you're on about, Melbourne. It's not that hard. Uh, to, <laughs> to everyone around the world, uh, to everyone in Ireland. There's a lot of people from Ireland. We've got family up and friends. They're actually just making their tea now at the moment, and they're in their dressing gowns, and they're freezing cold. There's lashing rain. It's beautiful and sunny here. Uh, welcome. Uh, to Jane. Lily and Maeve, uh, to the other part of the team. Uh, without them, the book wouldn't have happened. And it's been revised 50 times because apparently all my recipes are crap. Uh, and his spelling's even worse. So, also, a big yeah. shout out to Elizabeth Hughes. And her book came out today and we did our book signing together. So buy her book from Plum as well, but obviously buy my book first because it's better. Uh, so this is it, the common sense cook. The book is about every, you know, fried chicken to schnitzels to pies to fish to vegetarian, everything I post on Instagram. That's what's in this book. We're going to kick it off. We're going to start a tomato tart. We're going to roast some snapper. We're going to end with a celery salad. We're going to have James from Burke Street Bakery talking rubbish as usual. And then we're going to finish it up. All right, let's start. And we've also got cooking with Lily and Maeve. Let's go. Maeve and Lily. Oh, Maeve and Lily, got it wrong. Are you doing a cheers? Oh yeah, go do it, cheers. Cheers, happy Friday. Where's your wine, Maeve? Cheers. You, okay, you so you gotta, right, come on. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, happy All right. Friday. Talk in the Cheers. microphone. All right, if you haven't, uh, if you've tuned in over uh, lockdown, there's a couple of losers who live in the house. Uh, it's called Maeve and Lily, and we started a little cooking section called Maeve and Lily. Uh, say hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I actually got stopped in the supermarket the other day and I got pushed out of the way for someone to say hello to Maeve and Lily, so my era is finished. But yeah. Okay, what do we need to start? We're going to make a tomato tart. So we've got puff pastry. Jane, can you get the puff pastry from the freezer? I'll stop talking. Yes, yeah, sure. Right. 
we're going to need puff pastry. We need caramelized onions. To make caramelized onions, you've got to sli slice them, fry them in a lot of oil. What do you need to make caramelized onions, Lily? Patience. <laughs> we only rehearsed that 50 <laughs> times. Patience. <laughs> We're going to make our tart with creme pastry from it's South Australia, isn't it? Well, I you told me French. earlier. We're good. No, no, no. This is Australian. This pastry. Oh. It's amazing puff pastry. All right. So to start, we also just hit us with questions. Uh, questions it. about the book. Questions about how am I still in this house with all these people who just. Everybody send cheers. Cheers. Alison, Tanya. Happy Friday. Uh, what do you want? Okay. Liz. Onions to start the tart. Let's go, babe. We need to make a caramelized onion. How do you make a caramelized onion? You, cut it. you give your smallest kid the biggest knife you've got. Caramelized onions. What do you need to make caramelized onions, Lily? Onions. I mean, no, no, patience. Patience, <laughs> correct. Right, babe, remember, watch the fingers. We've got chef kids, they, they can chop onions. Yeah. Oh, here we go. This is a get ready. This is a drama. Drama. Yeah, the edge kit. Mariah Carey's just walked in. Here we go. Let's go. Well, where do I cut it? Oh, right. The way to cut an onion is your fingers behind the knife down, and that's how you do it. So, like that. My All right, mate. Let's go. Uh, fingers so behind. Can they use supermarket puff pastry? Of course you can. We only use supermarket puff pastry. We've just come out of a pandemic. Life's too short to be making puff pastry, peeling garlic. All right, that's good, Lily. You're about to lose a nail. Okay, so that well done, Lily. Vinnie McGrath says launcher. Oh, Vinnie down in Melbourne in the pub. Oh, mate, how are you? Now you can go for a haircut and a bit of a clean up because you're looking a bit rough lately. Right, so onions. You're going to need a lot of onions to make caramelized onion for a tart. Maeve, I've done 20 and you've done two. I've dropped a lot on the floor. There's a lot on the floor. So we're going to get the onions on the caramel, whew, onions on the caramelized for the tart, and then we're going to get onto the snapper dish. So the whole thing is everything's sort of moving. You've got your big jobs, because the onions are going to take 20 minutes to caramelize. Are people? Yes. Is anyone cooking along at the same time? Hold on, I'll let you know in a minute. Roy says hello. Roy! Lego, hello Lego. Like so Rowy, yeah, uh, Rowy's cakes. If you want some nice gluten-free cakes and beautiful brownie, Rowy's cakes and Anzac biscuits. And Anzac biscuits. Thanks, Lily. Rowy does a great job, and she helps me in the soup kitchen with the slider. Hello, slider, if you're out there. Pasta Vera. The oh. Oksanas are on. Yeah, hey, good to see you again. Okay, follow me to the stove. What? Um, Tanya said, thank you for pushing me to do my Cert 3 and Cert 4 in commercial cookery and lockdown. And thank you to Maeve and Lily, you're both amazing. Yeah. I know we are. Yeah, okay, so okay. We've got our pan on. I've got to preheat it. I only use Guy Grossi extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Love Guy Grossi. Right, so the olive oil goes in. We want it really hot, really hot. Get it hot. I don't know oh, why. Somebody's using frozen sliced onions, no tears. Well, you'll have tears when you, eat, when you eat the final product. Right, so what you do is you get your onions into this pan. Is your eyes watering? And you're just going to let them... I did a bit of seasoning. Can you call them? That's really lovely. Look, that's people. Jane's back in from Perth. Hello, Perth. So Jane did the cooking classes with us through lockdown as well. So what you do is, hang on, get your salt and pepper in on your onions at the start. Lots of oil, lots of Guy Grossi olive oil. Somebody's calling in from uh, Gillian Guy, calling in from Castle Knock. Castle Knock, that's where I used to live. Mm -hmm. What time is it in Castle Knock? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. They're on the, uh, they're on the, uh, what's, the what's the tea called? Barry's. Not Barry's, no. Barry's in Northern Ireland. On the... Jenny's in from Malabar. How are you, Malabar? It's the Malabar moms are having drinks tonight. I'm oh, just getting loose. This. OK, so what we do is we've got our onions on. Our onions are caramelising. 
Lily, what do you need to make caramelized onions? Patience. Patience. So what you do is the sugar in the onion is going to caramelize, it's going to break down, and we're going to get a beautiful brown caramelized onion. So don't worry about it, just give it a stir every 10 minutes. So while that's happening, we're going to come over here and we're going to introduce a little special guest. Special guest, hold on James. Oh, James is in uh, Studio 2, he's in the green room. We're going to bring James in. He's just arriving via chopper on the uh, Malabar headland there. Uh, so Mr. James White from the Burke Street Bakery, he's had about 50,000 jobs, ask yourself why. Um, and he does a great product at Burke Street. He's going to bake some bread, he's going to talk us through. And James helps me with the soup kitchen. And he's got a story for everything. James has a story for everything. But anyway, oh, big up to Isaac Piper and the guys who are watching in New Zealand. Hi guys, Kerry, Kit. James White, come on in. Obviously, like, wait, he's not a stunner. But anyway, come on Hi. in, James White. Oh, no, nice to meet you. How are you? Come on Hi. in, James Good White. Good evening, everyone. Well, firstly, congratulations to all of you guys on the book. That's an amazing achievement. And it I've been here for here. quite a few of the Barneys that were Talk to the involved. camera, James. Um, James has been in the sun, obviously, as we can see. Um, I'm just going to cook a little bit of an olive oil loaf that we prepared earlier today. Um, a bit like, you know, Colin's always on about at Burke Street, we try and use as many products that are local as possible. So we've got, our flour for this bread comes out of Gunnedah. It's a, a sustainably farmed flour. Um, we've got some olive oil, which comes from uh, down south, New South Wales. So, you know, it's just a, you know, they're great ingredients and we try and keep it as local as we can. This is a, as I said, it's an olive oil loaf, which is a, a white yeasted bread. This one's got a, a reasonably high hydration and it's um, it's a real simple white loaf. It's delicious to throw in the oven. We'll cook this at about 185 for about 25 to 35 minutes and see how we go. What's in can it, I, James? Can Talk I through ask it. Just Please. Uh, if anybody has any bread questions, now's the time to type them in. Yeah, but bread. don't tell them I'm not a baker. No, I didn't need to. Yeah. He's a master <laughs> baker. So, any, uh, any questions about bread, sourdough? James can bluff through it in the next half an hour. So James, what's the secret to uh, great bread? Um, it's a bit like caramelised onions. Patience plays a massive part. So That's most... what I'm supposed to ask Lily. Lily, what, what's the what's secret, the to, secret bread? to bread? Patience. 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 Yeah. We, um, this something. isn't a sourdough, but our, most of the bread we bake at Berkshire it is a sourdough, and we've been using a starter that's been alive for about 30 years, 27 years now, and um, you know, that's, you know, it's time Time and, and patience is everything. No. I'm going to throw this in the oven, preheated the oven at 200 degrees, and um, I'll whack it back to 185 as soon as the bread goes in. Okay. Thanks, James. That was riveting. <laughs> Can we, before you go any further, the Northern Ireland posse are on. Anne's on. She said hello. Hello, Anne. Um, Anne's just put the kids, and that's Jane's sister. She's in Northern Ireland at the moment in Banbridge. She's just put the kids down and she's gone back to bed because I know exactly how it works, Anne. <laughs> Um, there's uh, Castanock again said um, lion's tea. Lion's tea, that's it. Um, just... Annette, we're not allowed to mention Queensland because we're not welcome. Grab the can of orange for Yeah, not a massive fan of Anna <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, Anna. This is an, next... You're not helping anyone, Anna. Yeah. Nemo is not happy. Okay, next we're going to prep. Maeve, I need you here to read the recipe. Maeve, uh, Mick it's... and Julianne from MKR are on. Oh, how are you? Right, Maeve, can you read? We're going to do the snapper recipe. So this is the baby snapper with chorizo, tomatoes, and capsicum from the common sense. No, you just read it because we've lost the daughter. From the common sense cooks. It's in a solo. Okay. Right, Maeve, let's go. Read the ingredients. You preheat that. Call out the ingredients, Maeve. What's the ingredients? Call out the ingredients, Maeve. Come on. Call out the ingredients, Maeve. Six hundred grams of. 600 grams of a whole baby snapper. Yeah. Lean. Loud, clear voice. So that's a go. Excuse me. And we got the baby snapper. We got it scaled. We got it cleaned. Okay. Leave all the all the bits and bobs on there. The eyes, the heads, because it's a great recipe for soup after that. Next. One my mild chorizo. So mild chorizo sausage. You can use mild. You can use strong. Let's go. One onion. Onion, Deep. yes, diced, diced, diced. What school you got it? Three cloves of garlic. Of garlic. Yeah, go. Chopped. 
Yeah. 100 grams of baby red capsicum. Well, you Half haven't got any baby red capsicum. Way. Yeah, go. Speak out loud, our mouth. Speak 300 loud. grams of cherry tomatoes. Yeah, cherry. We grew them on the uh, balcony. 200... 120 milliliters of white wine. Yeah, we got rosé. Same thing. That adds a bit of acidity to the dish. You looking at the onions, Whitey? Yeah, onions are good, Chef. Whitey, I've got a question for you. Somebody said, can they still buy the starter from Burke Street Bakery? Yes, yeah, certainly. Still available? $8.50. Still called George. The starter. George. starter. 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 Okay, next. Go, mate. Amy sound good over here, Chines. Not one of us is wearing shoes. Half a My bunch house. of tarragon leaves kicked. Tarragon. Half a bunch of basil leaves. Basil. Basil. Two lemons, half. Lemons mm. stolen from the neighbours. The guy complained about my caravan. Hey, hey. Next. 80 millilitres. EVO, that's extra virgin olive oil. All right, so what we need to do is, you need to slice the onions, mate. Okay. Again, you've got one job to do, watch it. Whoa, whoa, that's my knife, it's better, yeah. sharper, you use that one. Yeah. Uh, move over, bro, don't take all the board. You, you, now watch your fingers, I'll do the garlic. Mm -hmm. Mate, can you go this fast, please? You're slowing down the production. Can you check on the Okay. Right, so what you do is you get your onions, your garlic chopped. Babe, move it over here to the centre. The little thing called a camera. No, she's doing okay. Oh, Teresa as well. Yeah. You've been promoted. No, I just did it. Oh, you just did it. Initiative. Initiative, what does that mean? Oh, God. Okay, so we chopped our onions, our garlic, our chorizo. Oh, so what we're going to do is we're going to sweat off the onions, okay. the garlic and the chorizo. So what happens is the onions sweat down, the garlic sweats down, Game the piece. oil comes out of the chorizo. Watch your fingers. The oil comes out of the chorizo and it flavours the, uh, the whole dish. So it sort of adds a bit of spice and a bit of colour. After that, mate, on the peppers. Let's go. We're under pressure. Try a label. So we're going to add a little bit of the uh, Guy Grossi olive oil available online to our pan. Good job, Mav. You can make your own lunch from now on. Okay. Okay. Also, on the onion factor, when the onions start to get a little bit of colour, we're going to add a couple oh, of knobs of butter oops. and a little bit of pig no, thyme. That's the wrong way. No, it's okay. rough. It's a stew, mate. It's a stew. Everyone in Ireland knows about stew because they're, they're, they're eating it for breakfast. All right. Can you stop dropping food on the floor? Good money just going on the floor. Keep moving your onions around the pan. They're starting to caramelise. And now you need to watch them. What do you need to make good onions, Lily? Shout it out. Patient. Correct. Okay. I need to... Uh... Any questions? Um, Will Stewart's on from MKR. Oh, Will, how are you? He's still learning to cook, that's why he tuned in. Uh, Jimmy's cousin, Darlene, is on. So you get your onions, your garlic, oh, and your chorizo <laughs> in there. Somebody said Maeve's got serious knife skills. So good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Watch out, ex uh, boyfriends. So what you do is you get your onions, your chorizo in there, a little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. And then that goes on the stove and we're going to sweat that down in a low heat. Onions are caramelizing. So a little bit of background about the book was uh, we, we, we've had a year and a half. It looks like a love, like a love heart. heart. It does, yeah. yeah. So a bit of background to the book was, uh, I need where's my water? All right, I just don't worry about that. Uh, a bit of background to the book was we couldn't, uh, so we've had a year and a half to get the book ready. Um, 
And then uh, we were meant to shoot in March, and then a bit of COVID thing happened, and it wasn't going to go ahead. And a big fert played the plum. We pushed ahead, and Alan Benson and the team, and we got the book done. So somebody asked what the gin was that we were drinking. Petrol. Might be a sneaky four, four pillars. Four pillars. Hello to Stu and the gang in four pillars. Right, so you got your onions professionally chopped. Now, Maeve, you're not off the clock yet because you're getting paid. You're getting paid by slushies it's to be uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I have three slushies. Yeah, I owe you three slushies. Pick but anyway. tomato up with you. You need to cut the tomatoes in half, Maeve. So we're going to cut the tomatoes in half. Right, back over to the stove to my little apprentice, the whitey. So we're sweating down our chorizo and our onions. Didn't hurt whenever you were getting her neck at them. Oh. Any questions? Jane? Any questions, Clayton? Everybody's just amazed at Maeve's cooking skill, and somebody said they love Maeve's method. One for the pan, one for me. Yeah, right, keep okay. going, all those tomatoes, I've got Maeve. one question. Yeah. Why did wardrobe dress us all exactly the same? <laughs> well, because I, 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 the, the shirts I look good in is the light blue, and I've only got you know two, the and they ripped. We had 6,000 meetings, but nobody discussed wardrobe, what yeah. they were wearing. All right. So we've got our onions over here. We've got our uh, chorizo and our onions sweating down. Starting to get a little bit of colour. Uh, somebody wants to know what's the worst recipe that you've had to try for the cookbook? Maybe. Oh, what's the worst? What the what's worst the worst thing you had, had to, to eat? Um, you don't eat any of it, so. Is the fish pie in there? Yeah, yeah. fish pie's yeah, in there. Why do you not like the fish pie? It's, it's, it's disgusting. Not. You're trying to sell books to pay mm. for your uh, reno of your bedroom and to fit in your school. What's the fish pie like, Maeve? Disgusting. Anyway, the fish pie, it, there's lots of other recipes in there Stop. apart from fish pie. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got our chorizo slowly melting. Somebody's saying you, the way you say chorizo is the same way as you say star anise. Oh, Not quite right. On the ball. Yeah, I, I have a good there. idea who that is. <laughs> uh, probably a guy crashed into a pole in his car, but anyway. No, it's not. Right, so our onions are caramelising. Is anyone cooking along? Yep. Who? Who's cooking along? Me. No, you're not. What's your favourite dish to eat? Who's that to? You. What's your favourite dish to eat? The donuts. Okay, what's your favourite dish to eat? Bad boys. Bad boys? Oh, got the fish pies, Mike. <laughs> what's your favourite dish to eat? Uh, the, the bad boys on the chicken bread. So bad boys is chicken baked on bread. So it's chicken thighs baked on bread. It's what, someone actually stopped me in the street to talk about it today. And how did it get the name bad boys? I named it. Lily actually had a brain explosion one night and she called it Bad Boys. So in the book, it's a chicken thigh. Can we find the recipe in the book there? I will show a little picture. It's like a show and, and tell. And there's bad girls. There's no, bad, what's bad girls? Here, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, yeah. All right, Maeve. Talking to the camera, talking to the microphone. Mommy? You got to show the start though. No, no, no. Show the start. Okay. Tell everyone what it is. I'll hold it. Okay. Hi, this is Cooking Wit. Hi. This is cooking with? May and Lily. And this is the bad And it's the bad boy, aka crispy chicken. You gotta pie. you gotta turn to the camera. Nobody can hear you. Bad boys, aka crispy chicken thighs. So this is the bread, the sourdough. Chicken, yeah. From Burke Street yeah. Bakery. That way. Right, babe, keep talking. And then, There's people tuning out. What it looks like. Did anybody ask me what my favourite dish was? No. Mine's not your favourite dish. Thank you, Whitey, much appreciated. Mine's a little dish that nobody gin. ever mentions. Jane's favourite dish is gin. gin. Comes in a bowl. Gin and tonic. That's gin and tonic. Wine. Oh, That's wine. a drink. So my favourite dish, it never gets mentioned, it's the chorizo and halloumi tomato one plate wonder. 
delicious. Came up on the slice. There's Charissa on halloumi, uh, beautiful baked cheese halloumi, and Mary wanted to kick it out of the book. Thanks, Mary. We kept it in. Thanks. Beautiful. That was my favourite. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Our onions are caramelising. I, sh I should be over here. Our onions are caramelising, beautiful and brown. Yeah. Now's the time. You don't take it off because you want the sugar to get that marmalade sort of flavour. Our chorizos are down, Maeve. I need... Uh, Sorry, Colin, you just threw a big stalk of butter in yeah, the I, in. Yeah, thanks, James. Uh, trying to cut, you know, cut the grass there. Uh, I did cut a, a knob of butter in there. Now I'm going to add to my pan for my snapper the chorizos. And, right, James, can you help me here? A yeah, couple of questions. Is the brief brisket pie in the book? That calls from Carl Rumble. <laughs> Hello, Carl. Carl, Carl is the that, drunkest man in the is, world. Is Carl sober at this? Can you someone help me sorry, here? Sorry, sorry, just sorry. everyone just looking at me. And somebody wants to know: Is it uh, is it important to keep stirring the onions while being patient with them? Yeah. Yes. Or can you leave them? To no, no, stir them because you want to like start to caramelise. Scrape them off the bottom of the pan so the ones that aren't caramelised stick to the pan. So I think we've got our youngest person who's cooking along, Zach, who's eight years old. He's welcome, Zach. Mom. Welcome. My advice is: Do not be a chef. It doesn't pay. It's great on TV, but it doesn't pay the bills. Wow. Great advice. Great Thanks. advice. Thank you. Jesus. No wonder you've got Where do we find him? <laughs> what are you going to advise a career in IT? You know what I said to him? No wonder you got kicked out of school early. Well, that's the reason I, I uh, was not very good oh, at school. Mary Small's on. She said she heard that. Hello, Mary. Uh, <laughs> Mary, I will stay off Twitter tonight when I'm on the red wine. Uh, don't, we won't talk about that. Common Sense Cook, big ups to Mary. Mary. Hi, Jill. Yeah, no, it's from you. I just can't read it out all the time. OK, right. Now, we've got some pig tarragon. We've got some basil. So what we got in there is our onions, our garlic, our tomatoes, our red peppers. We've added a splash of white wine. And now you're sort of making a sort of ragu. That's going to melt down. And then we're going to put our fish on top. How's the onions? Good. Let's have a look. Hold on. So this is our onions. You can see it's sort of getting that caramelised flavour. Still a little bit not caramelised. This is like the Aussie Dad barbecue version so far. We're going to take it a little bit further. So somebody wants to know what are you doing with the tomato? Did you just put tomato in there as well? Yeah, the tomato and the red pepper has gone into the stew. So it's like a tomato based stew. Uh, with your tar very uh, Provencal, and then when you put the fish on top, yeah. the fish is going to flavour the stew. But you want to break good. down the peppers and the tomatoes and all that lark before we start. Can I say no. Sorry, not to be a stickler for the rules, but we're just going to bring that back to the boil and add 120 mils of water. <laughs> Who's the chef here? <laughs> if I'd said that, I'd be excommunicated. Well, I'm just Sorry. helping everyone at home follow. Him, follow. <laughs> I'm sorry, Whitey. <laughs> uh, 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 where's your book? <laughs> like, it's not in the same section as yours. <laughs> so anyway, as, as Whitey said, because uh, I was coming to it because we're still sweating at the moment, uh, we're going to sweat down the onions, the garlic, the pepper, the tomatoes. We've added a splash of white wine. Then we're going to add a splash of water. 120 ml. Well, the, the recipes are recipes. The pastry is sort of the, uh, the bit you need to worry about. Everything else you can sort of wing and, and fly, like just taste. The whole thing about this book, what's the title called? Common Sense Cookbook. What's the title called? Common Sense Cookbook. Shout it out. What's the title called? Common Sense Cookbook. Yeah, Common Sense. You're not getting paid enough. Can you enough. stop eating the tomatoes? You're not getting paid enough, so you don't have a mic, so you need to shout. Uh, so it's called the Common Sense Cookbook. So it's about, right, you make something, you taste it. If it's too sweet, maybe add a bit of vinegar, that'll balance it out. If it's too vinegary, add a bit of sugar. Uh, uh, on that, somebody wants to know how much sugar for the onions. No sugar. This is something that really winds me up, huh? No sugar in the onions. What, how do you make caramelised onions, Lily? Patience. Patience. Oh, fucking hell. Patience. The whole thing is the sugar is in the onions, and as you slowly cook the onions, the sugar releases, and that's what caramelizes the onions. How do you make caramelized onions? Patience. Louder, you haven't got a mic, you don't get paid enough. Patience. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to chop some tarragon. It says pick it, but we've just come out of a pandi pandemic. Just chop it. And Tanya wants to know if you do cooking classes for men in Malabar. 
I do cooking class. It's we're not uh, racist or area racist. Or sexist. Oh, Pete. Tanya up the road. Pete, Pete. I reckon for Pete, Maggi noodles. Start on that, Pete, and get that mastered, and then come down and have a chat. You know, there's no, you know. Actually, Pete. Right, back Pete, to the dish. Back to the dish. Pete's bigger than me. Watch me. All right. Right. So we got our uh, tarragon. Our uh, what do you call it? Basil. Shut up, buddy. Like. So that goes in. Uh, we're going to add a splash of water, as my uh, uh, good apprentice said. Splash of water. And salt and pepper. What else am I missing, Whitey? Uh, we're just going to cook that out for two or three minutes. OK. So what we'll do is we'll bring that to the boil. The onions are ready to go. We're going to make the tart. Good girl, mate. So here we go, right? Have a look. Hang on. See the way the onions are now beautiful and caramelised now? Obviously okay. this is, we're on the move. Five. Look at that mouth. So the onions are caramelised, we're going to go back, we're going to make the tart, we're going to, I'm going to move the uh, snapper garnish into a bigger pan and we're going to let that cook out nice and quick and get stewy and then we're going to put the fish on and bake it in the oven. Alright kids, back to the bench. Back to the bench. Back to Studio One. The wine fridge is looking a little empty. That's because the wine fridge doesn't work. Who's that, Vinny? No. Wine doesn't last long in this house. Turn around. Hi. All right, let's go. Back to the bench, please. And that says Maeve's working Check. harder than anybody else. Everyone, here. look at the oven. Look at the oven. Whitey's bread. We're getting close. How do you know when it's cooked, Whitey? Oh, you just feel it. Oh. oh, you're as bad as he Thanks, is. Mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. That, that'll take. Yeah, it'll be. I reckon about another five minutes, and we'll. So we've give got. It a tap on the we've bottom. got two thousand people online. Yeah. This is like one of the biggest. This is the biggest class we've done, right? Yeah. Biggest class we've done, and big ups to everyone. Two thousand people. Not everyone can cook. How do you know the bread's done? Oh, I'll give it a feel. Whitey, can you talk to the masses? <laughs> so, so sh sh you well, you can put a fork in, but generally with bread, you'll give it. A, you'll give it a tap, and it will start to right. sound like a drum. I'll, I'll do a demo in about four minutes. Okay, so just give it a feel if it sounds like a drum. If it, <laughs> if it feels like a guitar, start again. Let's go, back to base. Right. All right. So what time is this tart to be in the oven for? What's the time, Peyton? 6.34. Okay, we're on track. Okay, so for the tart, what do we need, Maeve? Where's your recipe? Never work with children, uh, animals, no. Maeve. Okay. <laughs> right, call out the recipe. Uh, Caramelised onion tart, yeah? yeah? So just, so here's some uh, pastry we made earlier. No, you said you got it from Australia. Yeah, yeah from bro. From the shop. From the shop, bro. But you didn't make it. Uh, I actually need some flour, Jane. Please. That's Jeez. not in the recipe sheet. It, well, it's right, so, you. can everyone stop talking? There's too many women in this house. Right, what you need is a beautiful, like we've got creme uh, uh, puff pastry. This is, like this stuff rises like you would not believe. Uh, thank you. All right. I'm gonna add my tray. We're gonna uh, flour the tray, just so we can get it off after. Any questions? And then so we're going to... No, what's the coffee that's in the um, shelf? Oh, yeah. Strategically placed. That is a good friend of ours, a Malabar local, Ben, has a beautiful coffee. Uh, what, 13? Hang on, I'm trying to do the pastry here. Jane, can you talk about that? Because I'm trying to do the pastry. Yeah, so 13, um, locally roasted. It's on at uh, Burke Street Bakery. Yeah, we use all coffee 13. Yeah, and coffee. they also help us at the... Um, at the soup, soup kitchen, kitchen cold brew. Every Monday. Okay, where's the knife? Where's oh, the knife, somebody kids? Somebody about the port and the onions. Uh, I forgot the port, so don't worry about it, right? We don't need about the port. If you have port, pour it into the onions while it's uh, at the end, while it's deglazing, and we're going to add some vinegar. Wait, we've got to talk through it. Jill wants to know where do you get that, that pastry from? Uh, we got it in, uh, where do we get it? The cannery. You, get, you sort Specialized of, you sort of get it. So you sort of get it. 
you sort of get it in shops that are uh, like quality shops. Especially. But uh, you know, if you don't have creme, use pandas. Pand we've used pandas for years. So what you do is like make more tart than you need because tomorrow you just eat it cold. It's a great, it's a great salad tart or, or not really a salad, is it? No. It's a tart. So what you do now, you need to make a border around the tart. Why do you make a border? Because puff pastry, the border is going to rise. So it's going to give you that tart. It's like a picture frame. So basically your tomato tart is the picture and the border is the frame. That's pretty good, isn't uh, it? Question from Liz. What else can they use instead of port in the onions? Do they need to use anything? No, else? you don't have to. Port will add a, a little bit of sweetness and a bit of colour. But Apple we're gonna, cider vinegar? We're going to add the vinegar at the end. So I didn't say that. So while you, when it's caramelised, add the vinegar. It'll boil up, stir it through, and it just takes some of the sweetness off. Poof. Right, a knife. What we need to do now is a border round the tart, but you don't go all the way through the pastry. Yes, hang on, you just mark it, and that little indent will make the pastry rise. Okay, Lily, I reckon, I'll just do one side, right, and you gotta follow. So I reckon, like, see the way I'm just running the knife? Oh, well, that wasn't a bit straight, was it? No, it so you gotta do the same thickness that way. To here? Well, yeah, you gotta leave that width there. Huh? That width. If a man had a pastry sheet and did one width that size, what do you need to do that size? It's like school. Right, so you start there. Uh, so Maybe the other way. The pan, and a bit lighter. They say a woman's uh, touch, but... Tanya wants to know, is it better to flour the pan rather, rather than oil it, chef? For what? For the pastry? For the tart. Yeah, I just floured it. You're not watching, Tanya. Yeah, but she just said, is it better Hold to flour Hold on, Lily. Than whoa, whoa, oil? whoa, 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 whoa. Look at your mats. Look at your levels here. That, oh, yeah. sorry. So what do I do now? Go from here to there. Lightly, lightly, lightly. So what's happening now is you're just halfway. It looks like, uh, what do you call it? The, the what's it called? Maybe swore there. Don't swear in front of the kids. That's part of the uh, deal. Yeah, no, 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 no. Why? It's got to be that size. He's going to swear. It's not going to Right, so off. about there, right? So what you're doing is you're forming that beautiful little crusty bit around the side and that's one of the best bits to eat. Why does it have to be even? You ne question. mate, you never do mechanical drawing, I tell you that. You'll be kicked out straight <laughs> away. Well, Hold your knife properly. Mechanical drawing and Lily, you be as bad as me in O'Connell's. Hello, big up so O'Connell's. Hey, I made it. You I can have spell, to. I could spell you better than you. you. Right, what you do is, right, okay. And then sometimes I like to do a little, uh, little mark. Obviously, I'm not a pastry chef, a design, yeah? And then what I do is go the other way, and then when it rises, that little indent sort of pops up. Right, Maeve, I need some egg wash from you. I'm not, can I do that? You can both share. Here we go. Here's where the drama starts. Over here, please, because the microphone's somewhere. Right, break an egg each. I'm not gonna cut Into here? Yeah, into there, and then beat it up. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go around the edge with the egg wash, and that's going to give you a beautiful shine. Now put the egg in the bowl, bro. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, don't need one. Can I get a fork, please? Fork. I have a question. To everyone in Ireland, we're just going to open our little can of uh, Club Orange. I'll drink it. That cost about twelve dollars over here. Beat the egg. Beat the egg. Can I have some? Can I have some? Yeah, hold on. Beat the egg, bro. You're live. Don't worry about the thing. Somebody wants to know, Colin, can you open anything in Melbourne? No. Oh, uh, look, can I, can I just tell you? Melbourne uh, has better bars and I reckon better restaurants. Uh, obviously not pubs, because we've got that market down pat. Uh, Banksy Hotel and Terminus and watch the space. Uh, but I, I reckon uh, Melbourne for me has better bars and better restaurants than Sydney. But it's a bit dreary. That's why I don't want to live there. And, and obviously, you don't wash your hands, so we, we're not moving down there. <laughs> we can't, can, mate. Big ups to Guy Grossi, Andrew McConnell, Cara Martini and, and Liz Egan. Uh, Mel, I, I would never open in Melbourne because there's too much competition that is actually better than us. Uh, so I need to pay the mortgage. Mel, Melbourne, I reckon, is the, the standout food city and bars in Australia. Much, anyone in Sydney, sorry I said that, but it, it is. But we've got a better bridge, better beaches, and it's sunny and we're happy all the time. And what, um, we wash our hands more? And we're COVID free. <laughs> no, not quite. Right, do, no, do, do, so butter the edge. Can I have a go? Yeah, can you just, everyone just calm no, down? 
Now what you need to do is, it's called a dry egg wash, right? So egg wash is, you get it on the brush and then you take okay, it off. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, you knew that, did you? Yeah. All right, Michelle Roo. Who's Michelle Roo? He's a pastry chef. Oh, okay, okay, right, you do half and then you do half. It's me on white. Somebody's like, oh, burn. What do you mean? Whenever you uh, did not wash the hands. <laughs> I'm joking. I was on uh, Sunrise this morning with Guy Grossi. What a legend. Uh, Melbourne, I don't know how you've done it. I don't know. And as for Queensland, you better open the border soon. Yeah. Right, Lily, come on. Sorry. Dry, dry egg wash. What's a dry egg wash? I washed your door. Yeah, okay, but can you tell you're like on the uh, TV, bro? You dry your egg. Wash. Wash. All right, there's enough. You get your egg and then you do that. All right, can I get a little spoon, please, Jane? A little spoon there, please. Come Wayne. on, Whitey. Teaspoon? Tablespoon. No, a tablespoon, Whitey. Little one means teaspoon. Thank you. Oh. Well, all right, all right, let's go, let's go. Exactly. Now what I do is, around the edge of the tart, we add a little bit of rock salt. This is yeah, like a little, it's, it gives it, it when you roast it, it comes, Jane, stop talking, will you? It's very hard working with all these women and a little white man in the back. Right? <laughs> you know. Because he's racist. It's not racist. It is. <laughs> little white lives matter too. Right, let's go. <laughs> and then we're going to add a little bit of thyme onto the border. Right, Maeve? It, it says picked, but um, I, I'm like losing my reason here. Uh, Maria wants to know, what do we have to do with the tomato and chorizo now, please? What, Maria, just calm down for a second. The tomato oh, and the... The tomato and the chorizo is just slowly, it's coming, you're breaking down the, uh, uh, all the ingredients but and it's becoming a stew. But are they mixing it or anything? Are the, uh, the simmering, simmering, nicely, simmering, 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 nicely, simmering. Yeah. It's simmering, just Maria, simmering nicely. You get a little white man who's bald and has too much tan to stir it gently. All right, Maeve, all right, Maeve. It's not a pollock, what do you call it? Put the gin in there. Okay. Hi. Now what we do is our caramelized onion, we, we just put it in the middle. So we've added our vinegar, we've seasoned it, our caramelised onion, and now what you're going to do is just going to push it to the to the square. Can can everyone in the back just stop making noise? It's just so unprofessional, mate. It's just you and me in this. Right. So what you do is you push the onion to the line that you've cut because the line is going to rise up around the onion. Any questions? Yeah. 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 Go. Cheers. Doesn't look disgusting. It does. It does. Is it frozen? Yeah. What's yeah, frozen? Fridge. What? That meat. It's not meat. That's the onion. Oh, he did it yesterday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so obviously Lily's egg's uh, probably going to be in. She, She's done. <laughs> She's done. Oh no, we don't say that. No, no. But she won't be working in kitchens when she grows up. I know that. This is vegetarian meat, Lily. Plant based. Well, you just hurt onions. Anyway, moving Eliza, on. I'm, so that's uh, our. I didn't see your question, Eliza. What was your question? Eliza. So what do goes in? Right. Can everyone stop talking? Sorry. Can where's my knife? There. No, the other one. Give me the brown one. Give me the brown one. Stop talking. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, are you opening anything in Melbourne? Oh, Got no. That? No. I think the short answer to that is no. No, we won't be opening. Yeah, Wustoff. The new Wustoff. Beautiful handle. Gave it to me for free. Obviously, I want more. Beautiful wool stuff. Right, so now with our uh, zucchini. Uh, Liz, Liz just has a quick question. She thinks she missed a bit. Did you put herbs or something around the edge of the pastry? Yeah. I missed that as well, Liz. What herbs Time. was it made? Liz, Time. unless you're Stevie Wonder, what, like, what have you been watching? Look at that, Liz. There's herbs everywhere. Mate, it's just. Uh, right, so our zucchini, to those in Ireland and England, that's called a courgette. But over here, it's a bit, they call it a zucchini. Whenever you're allowed back over the border, you can come to Sydney. Right, so it's a great way just to eat veg. Eliza wants to know, are we doing this again? It's a yes. bit early to make that call. Let's just get through this. Eliza, at this stage, we, we may be getting marriage counselling and uh, there could, might be a little bit of adoption going on at this stage. So what we're going to do is we've Somebody got... Somebody made a point, there's no zucchini in the recipe. What? There's no zucchini in the recipe. In the book, there's zucchini. Let's not be picking on little, like, facts. I don't think there is. Uh, it is. <laughs> oh, no, in, actually, in the book, it's a tomato tart. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't followed a recipe all day, so don't start. <laughs> That's your fault. Right, so anyway, 
in this uh, tomato in this tomato tart and uh, zucchini. Oh. Well, we, well zucchini like it's in the like you got zucchini use it if you haven't when so the what pandemic other things can you use instead of zucchini oh, we practice this yeah. what other things can we use in a tart if we weren't uh, using tomato right me if you're up you can use pumpkin no you don't pretend you're not looking at it it's a cheat sheet yeah. No one knows you're looking at it. Go. It you can yeah. use pumpkins, onions, cheese, and whatever is in season. Very good, Maeve. You're very well knowledgeable done. there. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> no one's seen that. We've got away with that. Right, so in our tomato tart, I've got a bit of zucchini knocking around. I'm going to just slice that and add it to the tart. I've also, for everyone who just wants to complain, I've got some asparagus. It's in there. I'm just going to add that to the tart. If anyone wants to send that a letter. tomorrow's vegetables. Right, hey, tomorrow. One minute on bread, chef. Thanks, Whitey. You've just been a, a, a rock. Uh, cherry tomatoes. We grew them on the balcony. Beautiful. Three of them. Yeah, this is, this is what we grew on the balcony. <laughs> there's three tomatoes. No, there's one, two. Three, yeah, there's five, five actually. It was a crop, Maeve. Do, we, do you use both, uh, Melissa, what do you mean? Both the zucchini and the tomato? Yeah, yes. stay, stay tuned, Melissa. Uh, Obviously, you've been locked up in Melbourne for a little while. Your eyes are a bit pink and you I, can't you see. Got to, Amy's on, online. She's saying you've got to stop um, calling him the little white man. Amy. Wiley's partner. Amy, he's punching. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, Amy. You made the choice. <laughs> it's like Ivanka made the choice. <laughs> it's it, that is not my fault. I knew before you. I have stories. Okay, right. Tomato tart. We've got our tomatoes. So they go on the actual onion part. You don't go on the outside of the border. Why not, Maeve? Because. Um... Lily. Live voice. Yeah. Because the vegetable won't grow. Rise. It won't rise. rise. rise right. So I, as you can see, the tomatoes are all different shapes. There's whole ones. There's half ones. There's bits, tiny ones. There's tiny three ones. Free, free range ones from the garden. There's, there's <laughs> uh, fastenage grown tomatoes. Three. All right. That's enough tomatoes because there will be a lot of liquid comes out. Now what you do is a good bit of salt and pepper. Focus. Salt and pepper. Good girl. Where's the pepper, family? Yeah, not really organised. I've got a little bit of thyme from the uh, last recipe, which I forgot to put in. So just sprinkle that on. Oh, well, it's, it's on this one anyway. Uh, right, now, zucchini. Not in the recipe. Big, like, huge game changer here. What you do is you build a zucchini and you, as you, you eat with your eyes. Have you ever heard that? No. no. You eat with your eyes. It's a famous saying. So what I would do is I'd have different levels of zucchini, like sticking up. You don't want to go all flat, you know what I mean? And then, all right, you don't want to go all flat, as I said. You don't want to go all flat. Then we got our asparagus, put that in there. Not in the recipe. But it's really cheap at the minute. Yeah, in season. Whatever's in season, make on the tart. Onion jam, you make more than you need, and you keep it, freeze it for the next time. Great in the turnover recipe in the, uh, in the uh, book. Right, then we add a little bit more salt, not too much. We add a little splash of olive oil, not too much, because you don't want it to run over the actual uh, side of the tart. If you want it, you could add some goat's cheese, you could add some white anchovies. Oh, uh, yeah. What else? White anchovies would be nice. Some of that Meredith's cheese. Meredith's, Meredith's goat's be cheese salt. would be amazing. Meredith's goat's cheese is a beautiful product and they've been helping us in the soup kitchen and they're now uh, selling proceed, uh, proceeds of Meredith Dairy Cheese is going to Oz Harvest. Big shout out to Ronnie really? from Oz Good Harvest. Time. She's probably about six bottles of red in. Ronnie, how are you? Good to see you. Just see, on that column. So can nope. you sit in there, Whitey? Hang on, I'm just going to the oven shot and then you start right, talking. Right. So just on that, yeah, that, the little Meredith, the little Meredith jars of goat's cheese generally have a little gold lid. For this month, you'll see some in all the stores that have a white lid. And from that, all those the lid, the sale of those white lidded goat's cheese, a portion of that sale goes to Oz Harvest. So it's an amazing initiative that the guys at Meredith Dairy have done. And they're, they're probably the most beautiful Aussie farming family I've ever met. And they're, um, yeah, they're, they're paying a lot back now because they've been, they've been strong through COVID and they're trying to support everyone else, which is good. So go out there, buy Meredith Dairy's jars of uh, goat's cheese and look for the white lid. The white lid? The white lid. I, haven't see, I was there. I didn't see any today. Okay, Whitey, it's over to you now on the uh, Studio, Studio two, 2 on the bread. 
Back in mm -hmm. studio too. So Colin asked earlier, how do you know when a loaf of bread's ready? And you can see this has got some nice colouring on the outside, but also when you tap the bottom, I don't know if you can hear. Is that a drum? Like There's a drum. drum. Yeah, it's like, like a bass drum, yeah. It's yeah. not a snare drum. Yeah. It's a bass drum. So we'll just let this bread rest for the next 15 minutes and it'll be delicious. That's it. So simple. I could do that. Do you yeah. Oh, the hard part was done for the last 10 hours before I got here. Yeah. That'd be right. Yeah, right, this will be you're delicious. Up. What else you uh, got? To, where's your starter? Oh, no starter today. It's. I thought we rehearsed. You yeah, I know, but I brought a, a different loaf. But the other loaf that I did bring, which will just flash in the oven. So we did have a run through, and while he was bringing a starter, and uh, so we don't, we're not going to cut it when it's hot. Sure not. No, 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 no. I never cut a hot loaf. Well, you should be telling the. Uh, two I just said we'll wait show, fifteen show, minutes. Show them that first before you put the oven. This is another little. This is another little loaf that we baked today at the bakery. And this is using the um, Meredith Chev that we said. That's the Meredith in there. Yep, caramelised onion. What do you do to caramelised onions? How do you make them? Exactly right. So we'll throw that in the oven to get a bit warm as well. All right, so we've got our tarts in the oven. What's the time, Clayton? 652. Uh, Maxine wants to know, can, can we send through the recipe for the bread? James, can you give that to Clayton? Yep, it's, certainly. Right. It's actually in the book. It's, yeah. okay. Can I read Page. Yeah, it's actually said the name, Rebecca. Just pretend, like, buy the book and then ask. I'm with if you. you Rebecca. The, if you buy the book, send me an email, I'll send you the bread. It's like, it's like a ransom for your kids. Like, send me the money, I'll send you the kid. Yes, buy the book. Do what I'm doing. All right, Rebecca keep. wants to know, what's the question, Maeve? Lily? Which store has the starter for the bread? Any store you want. You just got to order it online. Go to berkstreetbakery.com.au. Berkstreetbakery.com.au. Order it online. And I think you can get it on Tuesdays and Fridays. And we'll just send it to whatever store's nearest to your home. And actually, Dimux and Kinecopia are giving away a free starter with every book bought this week. By the end of the weekend, you get a free uh, sourdough starter. Say, Colin sent you. Uh, and if not available, I will personally drop it off when I see the receipt for the book. Thank you. How many whiskies has he had? No, I haven't had any yet. Right. I'm not doing that. No. Nobody's doing that, by the way. Let's it's go. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Here we go. Not Kids, stop over, talking. Over, over. All right, Lily's woke up. Here we go. Over. What we got now is that we got our uh, beautiful stew has broke down, our onion. See, everything's starting to soften. You're starting to get a bit of colour in there. What do you reckon to that, Maeve? What? What do you reckon yeah. to that? Uh, I don't know. Try it, Maeve. Maeve doesn't eat anything uh, except unless on, it's white. It. Right, check the seasoning. Yeah. Check the seasoning, Lily. Check Somebody the wants to know what's your favourite yeah. extra virgin olive oil? Spanish or Italian? Funny you ask that. Oh, Jesus, here we go. The uh, favourite uh, of the Fastage household is Uncle Guy Grossi's extra virgin olive oil. But just on that, we, you know, we should be eating Australian olive oil. Eating Australian olive oil. It is yeah. Australian. No, no, I'm just saying, they're asking for Spanish or oh, Alto Italian. Alto olives do a really good... Uh, 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 yeah. Olive oil, yeah. Yeah. Westerly. They, go, um, they do a really good olive oil. Maria wants to know: Should we put the onion tart in the oven now or later? Well, Maria, it depends you uh, when you want to eat. So if you put it in now, it's going to take probably 20 minutes, and uh, and then you want to rest it for a few minutes. Uh, so yeah, all right. Like what? I don't even know what time it is. So put it in now if you want, and then rest it. Yeah, put it in now. So what you do with your snapper is you've got our seasoning is good, maybe a bit more pepper. Um, so let me say, can we get a signed copy if we order direct from you? Yes, you yeah, can. Yeah, banks here. Buy fastage. Banks here. We'll send them out. They're obviously double the price, but it's well worth the signature. Uh, right, so what we got now is our snappers. Where do we put the fish? Where's the cold yeah. cannon? It's hollowing. I said oh. that. Lily. You're not on TikTok now, bro. Uh, All right, so what you got is you got your snapper. You're going to season your snapper. No, because that's... And then that goes on top of your stew, right? So it, the fish cooks better on the bone because it's more moist on the bone. And uh, 
it just, it, everything on the bone, it tastes a lot better. Same with meat, and you cook it a lot slower. Uh, so I've got it to, to scale it. So he's taking the scales off, he's taking the guts out. Uh, and then what you do with everything else, so you've got all this tomato and pepper lark left off with the stock, uh, and you've got all the bones. What you do tomorrow is you add some passata, some water, and some orange juice. You boil it up for about an hour, and you make a fish soup, so all the bones, everything disintegrates and you've got the best fish soup ever, a bit of smoked paprika, and you're not wasting that until you're getting two meals out of one. That's my dog barking outside. Um, there was a question there, but I can't remember what it was. Somebody wanted to know, can we do this every Friday night? Well, no. we used to, but it was, my cholesterol went through the roof because we were drinking fire too much red wine. So, good. Ali, be quiet! Colin. Fire the clock, then. Salt and pepper. What makes, when I worked for Raymond Blanc, one of the biggest things he, he uh, yeah, told me was to taste. Me. Can you stop talking in there? Like, Maeve's taken over the Maeve's in charge. online feed. Oh my God. So uh, one of the things Raymond Blanc taught me was to taste. And it's what a lot of chefs don't do is taste. And that's what this book is about, is common sense and about tasting, yeah, uh, you know? Imagine living in this house. Perfect. All right. Let me check another great thing in the book, Colin, is right, using... to the camera, Whitey. You've been told... Ano the another great thing in the book is using whole fish. And it's something a lot of people are scared of. A lot I'm of people are scared of... Sorry to interrupt, Whitey. That was riveting. Uh, no, no, it just is. Just have a look at the pastry oh, go, go, starting go. to rise here. Do, I, do we need this bread in here because I need to put the fish in? All right. Sorry, carry on with that story. No, I was that just saying really, that... That was really you know, good. A lot of people are scared to buy whole fish, but you've got a few, you know, a couple of really simple recipes that people shouldn't be scared of. Just so, find yourself a good fishmonger and buy whole fish. Thank you, buddy. So that's... <laughs> true. You should, you should do a book. It's it is true. true. You, should, you should look at it more as this a career option. We could do a new podcast. Well, I've kept him going for the last... We should do a new podcast, The Chef and the Ghost. Yeah. Right, so this goes in... The fish got... Oh, the fuck, doesn't fit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll just move the uh, tart to the top. How many meetings? How many meetings right. have we had? Fish goes in. 20 <laughs> seconds before takeoff. The fish goes into my uh, Ilvi oven. Uh, Jules. Multiple uh, uses for the Ilvi oven, Next even class. steams. by Ilvi. I said three classes. I'm going to hire that up. Just remember the tarts in there. Right, now, to go with the tarts, we have... Let me get into the chair, right, excuse Maeve, me. Right, you need to focus and stop talking to your fans. Maybe only one of us that has fans. <laughs> right, turn around. Oh, celery salad! <laughs> so, can someone get me the celery salad in the book there, please? So, the reason... Uh, how did celery salad come about? Celery is one of those ingredients that doesn't get a lot of praise. Uh, but it was on a trip, uh, I reckon, 16, 20 yeah. years ago. Thanks, Whitey. Or 16 <laughs> years... Oh, fuck. I'm trying to work here. 16... Found it! All right, celery salad. Oh. Already the Celery salad. So, uh, about 16 years ago, I went to San Francisco and I went to this restaurant called A16. And I had this celery salad that was amazing, and it opened my eyes up to this vegetable. You had the celery salad at Zuni. I didn't have it at Zuni. I had it at A16. All right. Oh, this is it's going rogue now. Right, the celery. What happens is you pick your celery, right? See in here, everyone forgets about the heart. Forget about the heart. Right, give me a knife. So what you do now is you cut your uh, celery leaf. Jane. Keep all this for your soup tomorrow. So what do we do with this? Put it in the fridge, bro. Uh, you got our celery. Lily, call out the recipe. Uh -huh. Call out the recipe. Okay. This is my area. Recipe. No. One bunch of celery, one and a half bunch of celery. Yeah, next. One half, one half, half a bunch. Same thing. 100 grams toasted pine nuts. Yes. 20 ml. 200. Two, 200. Malabar uh, Primary, Mr. Atwell, you did a great job around there. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. I'm telling that. Yeah, he's probably he watching. After he already does. What does that say? Vierge. 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 Do you want to teach me? Hold. Go. Next. Vierge dressing. Um, see page 21. Sea salt and... <laughs> 
Sea I'll just stop you there for a minute, Lily, because that was... Sea salt and freshly yeah. ground black pepper. As riveting well as that was. Well right, done. thank you. Well done, Lily. Pierre's dressing is a dressing that has gone through my, my entire cooking uh, career. Uh, yeah, nearly every chef who's worked with me uh, hates Pierre's because it's gone on everything. Right, Maeve, I need you to squeeze lemons. Can I get the jug of the blender, please? Can I get the jug of the blender, please? Fucking Jamie doesn't have this, does he? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Oliver's sitting in his garage. Everything's done for him. His kids are like hair wash, no knits, no nothing. His missus is in the house. She's not blind on gin. My house. Clean Jamie. <laughs> cook in seven minutes. Come here and cook in seven minutes, Jimmy. Fifteen minutes. What are you going to get done in here in fifteen minutes, Jamie? You won't even get into get the stove. Right. Jamie's leading all. Right, that. enough of a rant. Le Maybe lemons, on. lemon juice, right? This is sauce for years. Are you watching Jamie? 15 minute cook me arse. Right, lemons, right? Coriander seeds, toasted. Toasted coriander seeds. So you've got, don't worry about the ratio. You, you need lemon, olive oil, coriander seeds, basil, salt, and pepper. We really hear this one. <laughs> Alan wants to know should Colin not be wearing a hairnet? <laughs> I'm in my house. I'm not even wearing boxer shorts, so don't ever mind it. <laughs> no one's got shoes on. No, no one's got shoes on. No we're going in, we're not selling it. Unbelievable. Are we? Right, what? basil, basil, right? Stalks, stalks, everything. You bought it, you paid for it, don't waste it. They go in there. We used to just use uh, stalks at the four in hand. You can use a little bit of celery leaf if you want. What's rule number four, when in doubt? No. Be as you doubt. Right. So now you've got your lemon juice. Yeah, you... Oh my God! You got your lemon juice. You've got your basil, your coriander seeds, uh, your, uh, and now you're going to oil. So it's a dressing. You're making a. a it's a famous dressing. Hi, Natalie wants to know what's the best way to get the strings out of the celery. I didn't. Just chop it. Don't worry about. We're in a pandemic. Don't worry about strings and celery. There's big. We've got no money. We're all broke. Right. Put that on the uh, blender there. Oh, really? Hold on. And blend till yeah, smooth. Wait a minute, give me a teacup. Right, stop for a minute. Uh -huh. All right. Maybe it should have, we should have hired in some kids. Chop your celery. Right, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah, that's what. Enough. Right, thank you, Maeve. Uh, you could be a mixologist. Yep, so, uh, Colin, you left the elastic band on the basil. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's nose to tail, not waste. Right. And somebody said that dressing reminds me of 414. That's, That's exactly everything. where it's from, 414. It's so, on everything. Check the tart, check the tart, check the tart. Yep. Uh, I have one, please. Please. Okay, sorry kids, you're like sort of in the way. Can you move out? Uh, Somebody's just grabbed a champagne man. I could... So we got pine nuts, we got our celery, which adds to, the, to a lot of... Uh, uh, Four minutes on tart, chef. Thanks Whitey, that was riveting. Uh, okay, and then, so the, the celery has a lot of uh, liquid in it, and it adds a lot of to it, any dish, um, a beautiful sweetness, and what would you say, wetness, or moistness, no, I can't say that to you. Yeah, uh, salt and pepper. You do the salt. We've got our vierge, which has got our coriander seeds. Oh, need seasoning, seasoning in here, mate. Seasoning in the dressing. Always season your dressing. Coriander seeds, the basil. And what happens is the basil, as you've blended it, sits, you can strain it, but it sits in this and it will get greener and leach in as the days go on. Make more than you need. More, more salt, mate. You're like Mike Benny with the salt. <laughs> salt and pepper, have a taste. A little splash of vinegar into your sauce for years. This sauce goes with everything. I got two hats with this sauce. Okay. 
You mix. Oh, you mix the uh, sauce vierge with the celery, the pine nuts. Is vierge sauce only raw? Oh, like, yes. yeah, it's more of a dressing. It's vierge dressing. Can I mix? Uh, okay. Both mix. Lily, I need you to. Uh, hold on. Right, let Lily mix that. I've got a job for you. And we're going to grate gold, Lily. Maybe you're going to grate some uh, parmesan into this. It's not, it's not on the card, but I just seen it on the table because I forgot it for something else. Do you want some mint or parsley? No. Damn it. No. It's a bit more of the edge because you wanted it to wet salad. Make sure you got it here. Ooh. Bit of parmesan in there is going to add another bit of seasoning. So okay. somebody asked, is it more of a dressing than a sauce? Well, yeah, it's a dressing. You called it the edge sauce. Well. All right, Vierge dressing. Vierge dressing. That was from Melbourne, I bet you. Wasn't it? Um, yeah. That was from Melbourne. They're like... I don't know, yeah. They've been locked up so long, they're going crazy. Is it a sauce or is it a dressing? I need to know. Okay, Actually, let's check. Actually, yeah, it was. <laughs> told you. <laughs> I told you. They're going crazy. Check the tart. Oh, whitey. Leave it in there another, another minute. Two minutes, sir. Fish is way off. That's yeah. Cool. All right, what's the time? 7.07. .07. Out of the way, please, we need to clean up. So, I'm just going to move my Red Rock Deli chips <laughs> out of the way. I would be buying Red Rock Deli chips in the next uh, few weeks. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm allowed to say. Red Rock Deli, beautiful chips, Australian grown, all natural flavours. Tune in. That's all I'm going to say. Lily, would you like a Red Rock Deli Crisp? Yeah. There you go. So. What flavour, you ask? Well, soon there's going to be new flavours. Huh? Come that way. Stop eating. Oh, it's okay. What you do, Lily, is enjoy the sea salt and balsamic. But there's going to be Do you put the star anise in the sauce the edge? Yes. You didn't. Well, because look at look at what's going on. I'm, I'm surprised. What was it? Sorry, what was that ingredient? That's not sauce for the be, chips. Uh, oh, what was that ingredient oh, called that you missed out of the uh, sauce fierge? Starnesis. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what we do now is that's a celery salad. Where's the picture of the celery salad, please? Page Can you sixteen. Not do that. Sixteen. There you go. Right. Oh, it looks exactly like that. Where's the celery leaves? Like, can we show the? Uh, Obviously, I've been a bit more liberal on the pine nuts. Hold on, hold on. So your celery leaves in the middle. You want to use these up? No, no thanks. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna need a whiskey after this, aren't we, Maeve? I don't drink whiskey. Oh. You don't drink whiskey. But if you did drink whiskey, what brand would you drink? Well, you drink Slane. Slane whiskey. Very good, mate. All right, calm down. It's not, so, it's not, a, it's not for a rabbit. Okay, so that's our, uh, give that a little mix. Any questions? Because I'm waiting on the snapper. Um, we need... quiz for you. No, I no. I blended it in the dressing. Oh, What's so that? If you were using the star anise, where would, where would it go in that dressing? Do you uh, when you blend it? it, when you blend it. Like there's so much going when on here tonight. It's, a, it's yeah. always raw, it's fine. Yeah, but you, and you blend it in. Thanks, so Jane. I don't remember the Jane Highland Common Sense Cookbook because that will be... Oh, Ooh, can, can you come and check your tart, please, Chef? Hold, hold on, Whitey. Like, it's, it's, got, it's, it's going rogue here. Obviously, a clean kitchen is a happy kitchen. Very rare in this house. Do, uh, do you add salt and pepper to the celery? Uh, you add salt and pepper to the dressing, season it, and then taste the celery, and then you can judge your salt and pepper. But the dressing should sort of season the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the salad. Can you move over? Cause... If you're going to eat, can you step out of, out of shop? Just taking this from the oven. This is like the uh, Jamie's shop. All right. Star in it. Somebody say you're not pronouncing star in it correctly. <laughs> Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. Melbourne. Go on, Lily. <laughs> so look at our tart now, right? See the way the base obviously cut a bit erratic. I don't know who did that. 
Uh, our thyme is broken down. Our salt is beautiful and crystallized. Someone said, Colin, why are you so mean to James? Yeah, exactly. Who said that? Who asked that? I've got a whole document. I've got a document on my computer. Is that my, is that my mum? <laughs> no, Why we'll... don't you come live here? And then after a week, you could live. Have you seen SAS on Seven? Well, welcome to this house. It's Will Stewart. Big shout out to you, Will. Oh, Will Stewart. Will, don't even go there, mate. The only reason you won MKR is because I was your coach. You Fudge the figures. Hey. Turn on Seven. Fudge the figures. Put the dot in on the top. Right, it didn't. Right. So we got our tart. Can everyone be quiet? Because this is like a, a big moment. Look at the tart. Are you, your tomatoes are just soft. And there's goat cheese there as well. Yes, Jane. It's fucking common sense cooked by Colin Fastnitch. Uh, right, there we go. Sorry to all the kids watching. Uh, and then, can I get a spoon, please, Jane, while you're drinking all that gin? Uh, so we're going to use a beautiful Meredith Dairy goat cheese. Uh, great supporter of the uh, of Australia. And. Uh, of the soup kitchen and obviously now supplying the Berkshire. You can buy this cheese in the supermarket. We're gonna break the cheese. The whole thing about it is break the cheese into the little gaps. Oh, it's gone in my jeans. Break, break the cheese into the little gaps. So it melts while the tart is still on there. That melts and gets nice and soft. And as I said, tomorrow, this will be even better. Well, no, it won't, but it's better. It's the best now, but. Right, so we got a bit of that. Now we're gonna, fresh herbs at the end, always fresh herbs. The only dried herb you should be using is, uh, what do you call it? No, bay leaf. Do you want some parsley as well? No, have you any tarragon left? Tarragon. Where's the picture of the tart? It's in the book. Page. 16. All right, no, mate. that was the celery salad. Oh, sorry, sorry, loose. Hey, Woody, when I say where's the picture of the tomato tart, you expect someone on set to hand you the... Uh, Sorry, I, I haven't received a copy of the book yet. There's 16 behind you, mate. Uh, we add a little bit of olive oil with the, from the Meredith Goat's cheese, a little run of the black pepper again, and then we're going to add yeah. the picks. Can we show show there? Oh, you've added basil on there. That's my basil. Obviously, obviously, there's no zucchini, asparagus, or cheese. <laughs> uh, if you want to write in, uh, my help desk will be open on Monday because tonight they're getting mangled after this. Uh, right, so a bit of tarragon on there. Tarragon's very polarizing, not too much. <sighs> parsley, I find parsley less polarizing. Thanks for that, Jane. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you're really hard up, Jane will have a cookbook coming out. It's called, <laughs> oh, I forgot it, I'll be back in a minute, <laughs> Coles. Woolworths, we work for both, doesn't matter. Right, any questions? Get a good, uh, that's a good uh, shot of the, uh, that, Lark. Um, Mick and Jody said you could have fudged the figures for them as well. Hey, uh, Mick and Jody, there's, there's one thing you gotta, you had to be able to cook. Joke, joke, joke. Hilarious, we're all up. What did I, uh, hey, Mick and Jody, what did I, uh, what did I score, what did I give out to you about? Everything. Yeah, I did. Uh, I thought Mick was going to kill me at one stage. Hi, Mick. I like Mick. And uh, Jody's hair. Love Jody's hair. Uh, what, on MKR, what did I score you? Did I, was I the one who sent you home? Because I like to be the one to send everyone home. I don't even want a winner. I want to send everyone home. That's my new show. Anyway, well, they didn't invite you back, so good luck with that. Maybe we Mike. Let's move. move okay, on. next. Next. Someone around the burn on that one. Yeah. What? Huh? Yeah. Anyway, what a great show, Plate of Origin, eh? Oh. Geez, are you going to miss anyone tonight? <laughs> nah. I'm, I'm freelance now. Okay. Ellie. That's a bus. Right. What's next? Let's have a look at our snapper. Let's get a look at that. That's like a carrot. That's a sharpie prick. Are you going to have that for dinner? No. Couldn't lift a wheel of cheese. <laughs> All right, so what you do is the snapper's still a little bit under. In fact, it still could be in the aquarium. We're just gonna turn this over, right? Turn it over, halfway through. And see the way it's starting to cook there now? Look at that, there's still a little bit of blue in there. What you do now is you baste your snapper with that, like so all, see the way it's getting all jammy? 
I need some lemon juice in here, Maeve. You could actually just take this off the heat and leave it for 20 minutes, and the residual heat of the pan will just cook the snapper. Because fish, fish will cook in that heat. How do you know when it's done? Go on. You just give it a squeeze. What is? No, he said about the bread. <laughs> you tap the bottom. If it make, if it sounds like a drum, the fish is cooked. So I'm just going to leave that fish sit in the heat for a minute. Go. I'm going to add my tarragon. There you go. Basil. Basil, yeah. Do you want so. No, I don't want parsley. Can you go away with you? Are you working got a parsley contract or something? Beautiful, my beautiful bit of acidity. <coughs> and we'll leave that there. And we'll leave our tart to the side, because that, that'd be a really good shot. Uh, if I just pushed it forward like that, it'd be a really good shot, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's great. As I said, without any uh, wedding photographer prompts, uh, just push that forward. Rob, if people want to make a uh, video or a, a studio as good as this, how do they contact you? Contestants wishing to play with Johnny Pictures can visit www.johnnypictures.com. Johnny Pictures, we're here for you. Or Tommy Rob, our partners and collaborators. Back to you in the studio, Carl. Thank you, Rob. Uh, 22 meetings and you got that right and you couldn't figure out that your pot didn't fit in the oven? Anyway, uh, <laughs> 20 years ago and when I got married, if I had an hour, like hindsight is a beautiful thing, people, you would not even be here. Okay. Can I have the book? We got 10 minutes. Now we're going to talk about the book. Common Sense Cooking by Fassage. We Suzanne actually said that she'd be adding parsley. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. So the Common Sense Cook, let's have a little flick through so everyone knows what they're buying tomorrow in the shops. Mm -hmm. If you, that's, there's a horrible, my adopted child made there. Are you talking about yourself? Uh, there's the celery salad, the, my kids in the garden, right? Let's go through a little quick run through the book. A melon salad with feta. Great for the Christmas table. So if you buy it tomorrow, you're really on board. No, there's a camera there, mate. See that? You're on board with the melon salad for uh, Christmas. We've got the uh, sprouts law. No, all of them, Colin. That's no, we're going to quickly go through. We've got the celery salad. Am I going too fast? Marlon's cheese. My good friend Marlon told me to make cheese, and this is his uh, sort of ode to Marlon. Right, we've got a beautiful green salad, green asparagus salad. We've got a... Maeve's up. What's that? Um. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. We've got a beautiful beetroot with a, a, a mashed potato mayonnaise. I'm moving quickly so you can't screenshot it. Herby potato salad. <laughs> We've got my mum's rice salad. That's my mum there. To everyone in Ireland, that's my mum. That's me, my sister, and my brother. Obviously, I was the best looking kid. Yes, mate. No. Vegetables. Big up. The green sauce recipe goes right. with everything. Move, move, move. The uh, pancakes goes. Well, I make great pancakes. The cauliflower yeah. cheese. Yeah, mate. Hold on. The uh, pinch of salt. Has dad ever made great pancakes? Never. Mother's Day with crap. You can't say crap on TV, especially oh, if you're a kid. Did. You said heaps of worse. Look at this. The great thing about this book, that was my potato crop of the year, but they were beautiful. Uh, like my kids, I've only got two. Uh, it's like the carrots, the whole book is built around before Alan's and after. Back again. Alan, Who? He's, he's moved from Alan, he's moved Turn from being us. worried about your shoes to saying Master Chef, Master Chef would tell you to clear your bench. What's Master Chef? I thought that closed years ago. No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we got beautiful vegetarian. Look, beetroot feta salad. We're, we're going quick. This, this is a great 414 dish. The sweet potato with smoked mayonnaise. A green omelette. We got the, uh, what do you call it? The cheddar bake and potato. Hey, great dish. What red great wine dish. are you drinking? Uh, whatever wine you didn't bring, we're drinking. The tomato tart. Here we go. But we've added a few extras. Look at that. We've got the whole pumpkin. This is a showstopper. It actually says it there. The my Somebody mashed else potato. Wants to know the licorice brisket in this book. No, it's in the other book, which we can't talk about at the moment because it's a different company. But if you buy this book, I will email you the licorice brisket recipe. Who will email? You, and my wife, will, Jane. Pizzas with the uh, kids. The pizza dough recipe, amazing. I use the Breville uh, electric Breville pizza oven. Amazing. What oven do we use? Breville. Breville. The Breville. Thank you. 
That's Lily smiling. That was obviously. Fish have to go back in the oven. No, no, it's fine. Be quiet, Whitey. That's Lily smiling. Obviously, on a good day. Okay. <laughs> Does the green sauce Muscles. taste like celery? No, no, no. Salad. There we go, Isaac, my good mate in Cloudy Bay Clams. Quick, it's an old move, Isaac's move, class. Move. Uh, great fish and chips. This is the fish stew we made. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Douche, douche, douche. Could be the same. What's next? Flounder. Let's move through it. That's dad when he fell off a log. Clafudi, Clafudi, what do you call it? Clafudi. Tarts, chocolate mousse. Kids, the horrible dog. kids, the dog, beautiful Yorkshire puddings, roast potatoes, vinegar, roast potatoes, lamb cooked on a brick. Melissa's a bit worried, hers doesn't look like yours. Which obviously, one? obviously, Melissa, you've got to go to catering college for 10 years, you've got to work in the industry for 20, and then that's how it happens. But what's wrong with Melissa? She, she cooked to the recipe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, if you'd like to email me, email me, I've got stories. Uh, ox tongue, uh, meatloaf, meatloaf, beautiful. People cook meatloaf. We got Osabuco. What else we got? Pies, pies. We got that beautiful man with some liver. What, his, Melissa, his liver what, doesn't even look that good. Yeah, Melissa, what part, what Orish dish too. doesn't look the same as his? Which one, the fish, the pie, or the Oh, yeah, she knows that, Jen. Corn beef, Jeremy Strode. It's an ode to my good friend, Jeremy Strode, the corn beef, Mr. Jeremy. Uh, spaghetti bolognese using the rind of the uh, parmesan, nose to tail, the porchetta, an amazing dish, the book's worth that. Poppy Grayson says hello from New Zealand. Poppy, Poppy, Poppy's about six balls already in now, how are you Poppy? <laughs> stay upright, stay upright, drink hydrolyte Poppy, drink water. Then we got the ribs, the barbecue ribs. Move, move, move. Keep moving, keep moving. That's the halloumi, hello Mary, Mary wanted to cut this dish out, amazing dish. We know that Jane, Jane's had two gins. Here we go, look at this, before uh, the start of the pork belly, pork belly on, pork belly finished. Are you wearing the same shirt that you wore on the cover of the book on purpose? Uh, yeah, this is a salt baked chicken. Be quiet, Whitey. So I only own two shorts. The uh, amazing schnitzel from Bank here. Yeah, he's more gin than me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, Whitey's just woke up. The amazing schnitzel from the four, uh, from, from not four and for, like, That place went broke when the walls took it over. From Bank here, Bistro on Terminus. Big shout out to the walls. You couldn't run a bat. <laughs> right. Uh, chicken terrine. And then we've got the uh, famous chicken bread. Did I say the walls couldn't run about? Oh, it stop. Right, big shout out to the chicken bread. Ruined the four and a half, them guys, ruined it. Okay, chicken bread, amazing soy poached chicken, chicken curry made by an Irish man. That's why it's green. Uh, what else? I've had enough that we're done. Any questions? Uh, the Common Sense Cook, available in all good bookstores and bad ones. Signed copies in Dimmock, Sadae, and Conocopia. How do you pronounce that place? I've got some champagne. Do we want to have some champagne? Yeah, open Hold the champagne. Down. Let's go. Yes. Hold on. All right. Dad, do you know fair filming's got a part? I read it from this book. What? I read it from the book. Great. <laughs> so let's run through. We uh, pastry, our onions, we caramelised. How do we make caramelised onions? Patience. Right. And then we let our onions cool. Obviously, we made some present. earlier. Oh. And then we put our tomato or zucchini, whatever veg you want. Put a, a, a little arch around the pastry. It helps <laughs> rise. We use creme pastry. Good Oi, Aussie. You're in trouble. Whitey's mum's watching. Yeah, she's. Whitey's mum, you're in trouble. Judith. 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 Someone said they'll buy a book. Judith, I've got a story. It's a wonder that chap's not in jail. In juvie. Maybe he was in juvie. I don't know. Uh, big shout out to Judith. I was good. No, shut up. Uh, can everyone just stop? I'm trying to do a run through. That's the tart. So the tart rises. You don't go over the edge. You season. Sorry. Can you calm down? Uh, then we had our, uh, what do you call it, snapper stew. We sweated off our onions, our garlic, our chorizo, lots of olive oil, as Jamie would say. He'd be lashing it in because he's rich and he gets it for free. Guy Grossi only sent me one bowl. <laughs> and so what happens is the chorizo flavors the oil. We paid for it. <laughs> the chorizo flavors the oil and it gives you a bit of color. You could add small paprika if you want. You could add chilies if you want. Uh, and then what you do is you bake the fish in the sauce, you add your tarragon, your basil, all that sort of ferments, then you cook your fish, it doesn't ferment, but it, it breaks down. And then you bake your fish on top in the oven. Uh, one side's cooked, you can turn the fish over, rest it in the sauce, and then it, oh, sorry, Maeve. Maeve's had her hair done, she's got lipstick on, yeah. Um, Belinda from the blind book. Thanks, Belinda. But well, you need to buy five if we need to. Well, we got mortgage payments. 
and we got we're, we got to do the place up. Uh, great for uh, Father's Day, oh, Mother's Day. Let's see the bread cut. You've just done uh, Hold that. on, wait, I'm in a spiel. It's not the whitey show. And then we get to the celery. The celery salad. <laughs> we slice the celery. It's an amazing vegetable. And then uh, you, I need some of that uh, Trump stuff. You just put it in the body. You just pump it in and it's amazing. And then the, the bread. The bread. Look at Whitey's cut the bread. Look at that. So we go. Yeah, no, that's It's got fine. a beautiful crumb. That's what we call the inside of the bread. Look at it. It's just delicious. Let's make it delicious. Did you get it? Yeah. All right. So talk me through the bread, Whitey. No. So, you know, this bread's a, just a beautiful little tight crumb, they call it, when the holes are quite small. And it's just beautiful for dipping into stews. Try it. Ideal for the... Uh, dipping into stews. Little tight crumb. Okay. And then we got the stew is cooking with the fish is cooking on one side, turn it over and at the other side cook. The celery, uh, which I, from San Francisco in Awakening, beautiful vegetable. This salad goes with chicken, goes with veg, because it's quite refreshing because the celery's got a lot of uh, a high liquid content inside. Can you guess 100 grams of uh, pine nuts? I don't know what it is, it was just, it was a bowl. There's too many people talking. You add the pine nuts, which are quite expensive. If you put this amount of pine nuts in, you could buy a house in Clomelly. I'll tell you that now. This is expensive as Victor Churchill. Hello, Anthony and Rebecca. Rebecca's probably 16 gins in now, and she's lying on the floor. Hello, Rebecca. Uh, Vic, Vic's, meets, Vic's, Vic's Meats Market on the weekend. Get down there. Vic is down there. Amy wants to know what's your favourite Red Rock Deli. Hasn't been released yet. <laughs> My famous Red Rock, fa favourite Red Rock Deli with a picture of a certain chef on the packet. I'm not too sure yet, Amy, because we haven't been approved on the 60 flavours we've sent in. But, Devon and tomatoes. Well, let me think. What flavours would I like as a crisp? I'll let you know in a few weeks. And the more... If you buy crisps to eat with a book, helps my kids through school. We need to put these kids through school. You've heard them read, you've seen them add up. We need schooling. So buy the crisps, buy the book, we need help. We're taking out of your job here. Yeah, we... <laughs> we'll pay the bill. These kids ain't going to the moon with NASA, I'll tell you that now. Okay, celery salad. I think that's all I've got. I'm out of time. No I've been commenting. How long, how many minutes we got left? Give me some champagne. Ready? We got two minutes left. Nice. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time for a shot. Well, it's like being back in Tala. Hey, or oh, Bambridge, Northern Ireland, hey? Uh, big shout out to everyone who helped us. I said all the thanks at the start and I've lost the sheet. Uh, it's been a very hard journey to get our book through COVID, like photographed COVID. COVID whatever you call it, COVID. It's not. Yes, yeah. uh, Pete. It's not even real. Uh, um, so big ups to everyone who helped us. Yeah. <laughs> big up to everyone who helped us uh, get to this stage because it's not easy. It's a big team effort. Big ups to Clayton and Darren at Banksy. I don't really know what they do, uh, but they're here. <laughs> oh, get out. Uh, Clayton's here laughing and joking like it's just not a job, but it is a job. And uh, big ups to Clayton because he cops all the shit. It's to deal with Jane. Uh, Darren, we're not really sure what Darren does, but thanks for turning up, mate. <laughs> and uh, thank you. And it's a book launch. Obviously, this would be in a big room, and I would be getting paid a lot of money. I would be traveling the country, doing many venues. Yeah, yeah, but obviously, yeah. thanks to the pandemic, I'm stuck with. Uh, Dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. Uh, can you look Guys, at the camera? Bubbles. Like, say goodbye. This Stop is the eating. end of it. Stop eating. Stop eating. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank uh, you. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. The Common Cheers. Sense Cheers. Cookbook. Cheers. Whitey Clayton, get in, say hello. Cheers. Get in, boys. Get in, get in say hello. Show your face. There's Come on. There's there. people. There's people need weddings. Come on. There's bubbles there. There's bubbles there. We've got a crew of, there's like 50 cameras. I could do this on my phone, but I'm not really sure what's going on. Big crew. Get into the boys. This is the grill behind it. It's very. It's not an easy job to film the passengers. It's, it's not an easy job to live to live with the passengers. It's not an easy job to be friends it's with the passengers. Not even to live with a Highland. That's a job, mate. You should, I should put in a timesheet. All right. Common sense, cook. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Peace out. Any complaints? Send them to Manu Fidel. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Cheers. Thank you. On Bye. sale now. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers mate. Cheers. Cheers. Oi. Cheers. Mave, cheers. Cheers, Maeve. Well cheers. done, girls. Cheers. We're still on. We're still going. Stop eating. And then one time... <laughs> I
available in shops uh, by mine ahead of everyone and it stops drafts indoors. Good night. Bye.